100% pure rock. 107.7 The Bone. So, Black Label Society out on tour with Judas Priest. Yes, and Thin Lizzy rocking and the Thin house. Lizzie. The great Thin Lizzy Black Label Judas Priest crusade. Now, you guys are known for being kind of like a rolling rowdy party. Oh, Animal House, yes. Are you still running the days the of the berserkers? We were just laughing. I mean, I'm, I'm glad we did have those days because it's right now, it's basically, uh, I'm putting a shuffleboard thing right up here in the front and in the back we're going to be having bingo meetings you know after uh <laughs> after the big rock show you know what i mean yeah it, it, it is pretty uh pretty tame like that you know that one led zeppelin book said when lions you know, no what was it when giants roam the earth you know that's when berserkers roam the earth uh, you know I, I just go wow there's not a whole lot of berserking going on lately Maybe still with the porn and stuff like that. But Are I you going to blame that on old age or sobriety or just yeah, well, I mean, been sobriety, doing it long enough? Well, yeah, I haven't, I, you know, actually it's just like I haven't gotten in one argument with the uh, with the immortal beloved since I, you know, since the drinking's been put on hey <laughs> since the pub closed. But uh, no, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's so funny with the, you know, I mean, it's not just that I stop, you know, uh, hitting the sauce. I mean, it's just like, uh, there's no, I mean, like every day, I mean, it was just like everybody. It was like Animal House. It really mm -hmm. was. I mean, in the cast of characters that roll with us. I remember some of it. Uh, without a doubt. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like every one of us, I said, are cartoon characters. I mean, you, like if we didn't exist, all my buddies and uh, the rest of the Doom crew and everybody, we'd literally have to make them up. You know what I mean? So, uh, no, but I mean, like, it's just, it's, you know, it's funny because everybody always used to say with Ozzy, you know, like when we, the blast we used to have with the boss and everything like that. You know, it's like uh, people would be like, is, man, is Ozzy like really crazy, man? Or this and that. You know, any of my friends ask, I go, well, let's look at it this way. You stick two bottles of Crown Royal in your buddy, a case and a half of beer, you know, a couple shots of tequila in them, spin them around a couple times, just let them go and just sit back and watch the entertainment ensue. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, usually, you know, when he's, when any of us aren't hammered, we usually don't do, you know, stupid jackass stuff, or there's not like tons of stories that happened like last night. You know what I mean? Like you jumping up on the bar, taking your top off, you know, kicking a couple guys in the face, you know what I mean? And it's just, you know, like all of us having a good time, you know, like usually when, you know, you're not all sauced up, things like that usually don't happen at a PTA meeting with your kids, you know what a I mean? A coffee buzz is just not as dangerous. No, slightly not as dangerous. No. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty mild mannered. But no, I mean, we're still having a blast out here. I mean, it's just like jamming all the time. I mean, nothing's really changed. Like even with me, I always said they go off. Uh, well, has anything changed now? You don't, you know, you're not drinking anymore. I go, no, I still do everything I did before. You know, you know, lifting, practicing, uh, you know, watching porn. You know, pounding, pounding myself and like an treating my body like an amusement park. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just like, uh, but. And you know, like with us back in the day, the, the running, the whole thing was just like the Marines. You got to answer the bell the next day. It doesn't matter how blasted you get the night before, and you're having a good time with the guys. I mean, you got to when the bell rings, you got to answer the bell. You know, time to chop, chop, time to go to work. So, uh, how's the health doing now? So, I mean, does touring take a toll on you at all? No, I, I think the the only reason, the only thing touring ever does to anyone when they say it's exhaustion or anything, dude. Is you kicking your own ass, you know, every night, just drinking and just, you know, just hitting it hard every night. You know, I mean, it's just like, aside of this, you get on, the, after we do the tour, you have something to eat, and then it's just, you lay back down, you go to sleep, and you wake up the next day, and I go hit the gym, and then practice some more, and then it's time to go back up on stage and make the donuts, you know what I mean? So it's just like, no. The exhausting thing is us being up till 9, 10 in the morning, still drinking all night, and, you know, and then getting ready to go no sleep and no, the whole nine yards. Sound check still at five. Yeah, they, you know, come on. I mean, it's just, no, it, it ain't exhausting. Uh, something I remember, um, and I don't remember what the resolution ever was, you guys had a problem with the overseas uh, motorcycle clubs and the Black Label logo. Um, how did you guys resolve that? No, the guys just came in and said, Zach, man, you know, it'd be cool if, you know, out of respect if you guys didn't wear the colors tonight in the, in the town. And they were like, we, we understand it's a band and everything. I said, yeah, no problem, man. So, you know, we, we still hang out with that motorcycle club anyway. They, the guys all come down to the gigs, have a great time, and everybody, it's a blast. So it was just a respect issue. I was like, yeah, of course, no problem, man. Without a doubt. So it was just a brief blip. Yeah, that's why. And then the guys come down to the gigs now. Last time we were, you know, we go back again, they'll be back, and everybody will have a good time again. Yeah. So Black Label Society, now that you don't have to be kind of at Ozzy's beck and call, BLS is free to kind of continue on like a regular band. Are you, you know, going to do cycles? Me, Oz still calls me up to, you know, clean the dog run in the back and, you know. <laughs> and do the do the dirty dishes and make sure the laundry's clean, you know, before guests are over and stuff like that. But uh, no, I still talk to the boss and everything like that. So I mean, everything's great, man. Uh, but uh, 
you know, and with mom, with Sharon and everything like that. So, uh, you know, my wife, Barbara, and they, they still hang out and go talk and go out and get lunch or whatever. But uh, but the whole thing is, um, no, yeah, I mean, it's just like with Black Label, you know, I love working. So, I mean, like when I was playing with Ozzy, it never got in the way anyway because it's always music all the time anyway. So, you know, I mean, like I said, <clears throat> like with Black Label now, it's just, you know, it's 25-8, you know, eight days a week, 366 days a year, you know, and there's no Saturdays or Sundays, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so it's just, uh, yeah, but I wouldn't want it any other way. I love working, you know what I mean? So, you know, because that, that's why I said it gives me something to do because otherwise if I don't have a guitar in my hand or I'm not working, you know, thinking about artwork or anything, you know, everything geared towards Black Label, I'm just, I'd just be whacking it all day. And that's not really good when you're at a, your kid's PTA meeting or, you know, <laughs> when you're at McDonald's or something like that with the kids. And they're, and they're Sometimes it's inappropriate. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> so, so besides that, what other outlets are you uh, looking into? Because for so long you were pulling double duty, doing BLS and, and doing Ozzy and touring constantly. Um, you've got to have a ton of other stuff going on right, right now. now. What we got on the, on the table right now, we're getting ready to do, uh, after we get done with the, uh, the Priest Lizzie crusade over here, uh, I think we we're going to start doing a on black and DVD. We've been talking about because we got the two the two other DVDs that we did, you know, with all the heavy stuff and stuff like that. You know, it still has mellow stuff in there because we always, you know, it's like the Zap thing. As much as we love Black Dog, I like listening to Going to California and the mellow stuff too. But uh, you know, um, we're talking about doing like a you know having some of my guest musician buddies you know join us and having a four piece string section, a pedal steel guy, and another piano player because I play piano too. But I mean. Uh, like a songs for hangovers yeah. part two yeah totally but i mean just or just doing either like you know like how we did with the song remains not the same but we took uh you know you could take overlord i mean that's more of an acoustic version of a heavy song but like you know parade of the dead is a whole complete reworking of a rock song you know what i mean it's just the only thing that's that's why it says the song remains not the same you know because it's it's the same song but it's not the same you know what i mean so not even just acoustic version of it it's just uh completely reworked the only thing that's familiar is the lyrics you know what i mean some of them the melodies are even different so <clears throat> uh yeah so i mean I, we plan on blowing that up you know who are some of the guys that you're looking at working with on that um oh with the the sit in with me and stuff like that It'll probably father cantrell slash you know any, any of my buddies duff you know i mean just like just give him a call to see if the just guys want to sit in you know, well whoever's not working or you know or whoever <laughs> You know, whoever whoever can get away from their meth lab out in their garage, you know, things like that. You know what I'm saying? What's a birthday party like for Zach Wild? I mean, I, you know, like everybody for so many well, my, years. My 39th birthday party was pretty insane. So, I mean, you know, my wife kept that one pretty secret and everything. And the funniest thing was I was the only sober guy going in there. I mean, everybody had been there for already for a couple hours. <laughs> and was, I mean, we see. How'd they surprise you? Everybody was blitzkrieg by the time. <clears throat> well, Barb had it set up that we were going to see Oz and Mom. <clears throat> so, you know, whenever I'm around Ma, I always got to be on my best behavior. You know, this is when we were drinking and stuff. So it was like, you know, I, I didn't have a cocktail or any beer or anything like that. So when we get there, I wait till I get home and just, you know, flush down two cases of beer and, you know, a bottle of Crown. I had to wait till we get home. But, uh,. <laughs> It's like, how old am I? <laughs> my 40s, ain't I? You know what I mean? But this is when I was on my 39th birthday. And then, but we had, everybody was down there at that thing. Barb had, you know, it was a surprise birthday. I thought we were going over there to talk about we we're going to do another record or we're, uh, mom had whatever plans, you know, whatever. We're going to be splitting the atom or I don't know, Just whatever. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. I said, oh, we're going to have dinner with Ozzy and mom, you know. So I said, all right, no problem. But uh, yeah, so I show up and then. Every jackass I know was in the thing, you know. I mean, they really actually did surprise me. Like, I never, like, nobody, like, no kind of said, hey, dude, I'll see you at your birthday party. And not, like, nobody, they actually surprised me. Slash's Viper wasn't parked out front. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, well, what happened, boy, I've had everybody, she rented this, like, big-ass house up in Hollywood. And then, so everybody's cars were parked somewhere else. And they had a driver come down and get everybody and drive them all the way back up. It was a good thing, too, because I don't think anybody should have been driving anyways. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, I mean, it was wasted, man. <laughs> and, and the whole theme of the party was it was a disco party. Oh, no. So, oh, yeah, I've got some I've got some awesome pictures of Father King, Kerry King, <laughs> and his disco clothes. <laughs> He's like Zach, too, seriously. If any of these pictures... Blackmail. You ever do get out, I will have to kill you, dude. <laughs> I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> Raining blood. Just mother. knowing that they're out there makes yeah, me smile. I'll, I'll be raining in blood <laughs> if those photos do get out. 
Now, you're you're also not just one of the biggest metal musicians, but uh, one of the biggest metal fans. And what's it like to be out on tour with Judas Priest right now? It's, 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 you you know, love it. without, it's an honor, without a doubt. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm saying, you know, from being 14 years old, learning, you know, having pictures of the guys on your walls and, you know, learning the songs. So, I mean, it's just like, uh, but, um, you know, it's it, it's mind-blowing. And not only that, uh, you know, to become friends with the guys and everything like that over the years, because one of the guys did the uh, the Ozfest, you know, mm-hmm. meeting Glenn and KK and all the guys and, you know, Rob, obviously, and Ian and Scotty. I did, we did a clinic years ago, me and Scott, at a, a guitar clinic. When I was doing guitar clinic, Scott was playing drums, you know what I mean? It's some music store in like, West Virginia somewhere, but... Uh, no, it's definitely cool seeing all the guys again and every night, and they're killing it every night. You know, they sound great, and the Thin Lizzy guys sound great. And I've known Reggie the singer; I've known him for years, so he's, I've, I've seen him playing with the band. I said, "Dude, what the hell?" You know, so it's, it's great seeing all the guys. I always say Thin Lizzy is like a band that musicians love. Musicians seem to just go nuts for them more than average fans do. No, yeah, well, I mean it's it's amazing. Well, you know, I mean I got all my buddies that are Thin Lizzy freakos and everything like that, but I mean it's just like. Uh, yeah, it just goes to show you how, you know, good how good music just endures. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, <clears throat> obviously Phil's the original singer and the songwriter and all that stuff. But I mean, uh, it's just, that's just a. It, it just goes to show you how good his writing and his singing and and what the songs mean to people. You know what I mean? It's like it had to go on. Well, it's great that music can carry on like that. I mean, it's just like look at Bach and Mozart. People are still playing their music to this day. You know what I mean? Because it's good. You know. What do you see uh, that's coming up now that you really like to listen to? Is there anything new, or are you still kind of like with me? I mean, <clears throat> no, I know about all the you know the newer bands or you know metal bands or anything that are going on. You know, you have your Vince Sevenfold, Five Finger Death Punch guys, and I mean, you know, I mean, well, it's actually it's cool coming back that you know guys got chops. You know what I mean? And they they actually practice, and you know, I mean, like the whole guitar thing's coming back. But I mean, uh, I mean that's definitely really cool for aspiring kids. You know what I mean? But uh. But I mean, you know, like uh, when the grunge thing was going down, I thought that was great too. You know what I mean, with Alice and Soundgarden and everything like that. And you know, but I mean, it was its own movement and everything like that. But I mean, uh, which was awesome, you know. So, uh, but that's what's cool. I mean, music, music is always evolving. You know what I mean? It's just like when you had, you know, the Beatles coming out, and or you had Elvis, then the Beatles come out, and then the Stones, and then all of a sudden you have the hippie movement going on. And then, you know, <clears throat> the Hendrix and everything, and then Cream, and then all of a sudden Zeppelin, and then Sabbath, and then, you know, throughout the 70s, it was just mind-blowing how awesome the music was. I mean, how diverse all the music was. And I mean, it's just, like, amazing. And then the disco stuff, and, you know, people say what they want about disco. Those are real musicians playing that stuff, man, and writing it. There was no Pro Tools back then. I mean, you had to have chops back then to play that stuff. So, I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, and then when the 80s came rolling around, you know, Van Halen, and then all of a sudden all the... The British wave of metal, and then, you know, I, you know, I, I, I love history of, of it all as well. You know what I mean? Of, of guitar players and everything like that, where it all starts, and you know how it evolves. You know what I mean? How it got to Jimi Hendrix. You know what I mean? And you know, so, but you know, some kid just finds out about Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, and then they go back to Jimi Hendrix, and then they go back from Hendrix, they go further back and further back. You know, with BB King, Buddy Guy. You know, and then all of a sudden further back from that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just history. You know what I mean? But it, it's just, which is always super cool. Um, so, as somebody who started out as a very young guitar player that all guitar players looked up to, and now that you've had 20 years of in the business, who do you see as like the young kid guitar players that you really see have like a spark that you had? Well, so, well when we did the last Berserkus, you know, we had Alexi out there and stuff like that because, you know, I mean, he's technically he's amazing and he's super cool kid and everything like that. So, I mean, it's just like, uh, no, no, I always talked about, you know, I said, man, we start the Berserkers, I'd, I'd love to get, like, Alexi to come out and do some stuff or whatever, you know, so, I mean, definitely, he's the spearhead of the thing, and then, you know, Gus G, that's playing with Ozzy, Gus is great, too, and I mean, we just did the show, I was hanging out with Gus for a bit, and he's super cool, and an amazing player, you know, so, uh, but, you know, like I said, the, the Avenge kids are, like I said, they can, you can tell they practice and they, and they jam, so, which is great because it'll just inspire younger kids to want to pick up a guitar and, you know, like, and even with the Guitar Hero game and everything like that, I mean, it's just, it's like the best thing to happen to guitar since Eddie Van Halen played Eruption, you know what I mean? Just because a kid will learn to play on that and then who knows, you've got the next Eddie Van Halen or Randy Rhodes or Jimi Hendrix or Jimmy Page coming out of that thing or Dimebag because 
they'll go, I started on that, and then I, I, you know, I saved up my money mowing lawns, and I, I finally bought a real guitar, you know what I mean? And I, you know, I took lessons or whatever, and I learned how to play. So, I mean, it, but it all stemmed from that game. So, you know, I think it's great, man. I mean, it's just, it's only good for guitar. So what do you see um, coming up, like, in the next year or so? Because you guys usually have to plan your lives, like, year, year and a half in advance, right? Yeah, well, we're, well, you know, the album's been out a year now. We've been touring for over a year. So <clears throat> after this, we're going to go to uh, Australia. And then uh, I think we go back to Europe again. And then we're doing that, you know, the unblackened thing. So uh, and then after that, I, I'm, I'm figuring out what we're supposed to do right after that. But that's going to take us into maybe a couple months into next year, you know. And then we'll figure out when we're going to go in and make another record or whatever, you know what I mean? As somebody who has the ability to like put together a dream team of musicians, is there like a like a dream project that you would want to do someday? I mean, right, you know, I mean, put it this way, I can't complain about the, the the band I'm in now. You know, I mean, it's just it's as far as creative freedom, and I couldn't ask for more. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> like you said, I mean, with Oz, it's you know, when you're playing with Oz, you're Derek Jeter. You know, now I'm in a position where I'm George Steinbrenner. You know what I mean? So in Black Label. So you know. I just mean side project wise, not to take away from BLS. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, well, no, I mean, uh, uh, you know, if I did like a Travel and Wilbury thing with, you know, some of my musician yeah. buddies, you know Something what I mean? Like yeah, which is, I mean, I, I dig Travel and Wilburys, you know what I mean? Saw a special on George Harrison the other night, but uh, no, I mean, uh, like that would be cool too. I've thought about doing, you know, some some buddies I know and stuff like that. So uh, we've actually talked about doing something. So, but when I, if that comes about, I'll, I'll let you know. 100% pure rock. 107.7 The Bone.